I'm snotting from the wind. <laughs> Katie, if you're watching this, my bad. My head's all over the place today, to be honest. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see. Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is the second to last video in my life story series. And it is all about, you guessed it, me being 27 and having no friends. I will actually be turning 28 in August. I do just quickly wanna show you my t-shirt. It just put a smile on my face when it arrived in the post, but I'm gonna turn around for you now. It says, just by being yourself, you put something wonderful into this world that was not there before. If you are new to my channel, my name is Chelsea Nichols. I'm 27 years old. I live in Oxfordshire in the UK. I live in a Torah caravan on a privately owned campsite with my boyfriend of five years, James. I work part-time at The Harvester. I've had 20 jobs in the last 14 years. I have done a video on that and I will put a link to it in the description box below. Let's just get straight into this video, shall we? So the first topic that I want to talk about is school and my friendships at school so in secondary school I did have a group of friends one of them in particular was also my friend in like infant school and junior school as well we had a group of friends they would all hang out at the quad it was just this area that somebody named the quad everybody knew each other and like i wouldn't say i was super duper close to anyone in particular it was just like the hangout and i had a group of friends i also joined a drama club that i went to every wednesday and i got on with everybody there like yeah i, I didn't see anybody outside of school and that is something important for me to say like whilst i did have a group of people to hang out with at school i don't know if you would call them friends because i didn't actually see them outside of school when i went to college for one year to study my level two qualification in childcare, i was doing the course with two other people from secondary school that i was friends with and we were friends throughout that whole year at college but after college they didn't stay in contact with me i'm the kind of person that doesn't like reaching out to people to like chat or hang out and that's something my boyfriend james always says to me like well did you message them but they should know me well enough if they were my friends they should know me well enough that i i can't do that because of my fear of rejection i don't want to reach out and then it gets thrown back in my face if they were my friends they would know that something i do want to talk about when it comes to those two people was that when i had an 18th birthday party it was like a surprise surprise 18th birthday party i had no clue about it they were invited and during the party i remember saying that i would give them my phone number and one of them turned around and said oh i've already got your number and i remember standing there thinking you've had my number for like a whole year since we've left college you haven't spoken to me, but you've come here for my birthday party. Props for the free alcohol. Like, couldn't believe it. And I felt just this sense of rejection and disappointment. And I was trying to figure out, you know, what did I say wrong? What did I do wrong? Is it my personality? Is it the way I dress? Is it the way I look? Like, what is it that made them not contact me, but just come for the party to use me for the alcohol? Like, I, I just don't know but anyway that's that the next topic that i wanted to talk about was university so i didn't go to university until i was like 22 years old and there was only nine of us on the course we were actually the last people to do that course and then they made it into apprenticeships so not a university so there were nine of us all together including myself and we were at university full time for two years we all got on like a house on fire we would go for like meals every now and again and we were just doing everything together but after university nobody spoke to me again we were on a group chat and nobody even spoke on the group chat again it's now been two years since I graduated. This will be the third year since I graduated and I've not had contact with any of them. The next topic to talk about is the 20 jobs that I've had. So I've worked in childcare, hospitality, retail, policing, probation, various office jobs. And I have not been in contact with anybody that I have worked with. Again, if they truly, truly knew me well enough, they would know that I can't reach out because of that fear of rejection again. But 
nobody has reached out to me. I have had occasions where like my dad has bumped into somebody or my mum has bumped into somebody and I've reached out and said, did you see my dad the other day? Did you see my mum the other day? And they're like, yeah, yeah. They reply to my message in like five minutes, but what they don't have five minutes spare to reach out to me. I, I just don't know because I have never had like a fight in school. I never had fights. I've always got on with everybody. Like I am the most approachable person in the world. I'm too good. I'm too kind because I let people walk all over me. I don't know what it is I've said wrong or done wrong for people to just not want to know me or care about me, but nobody has. The next topic I want to talk about were friends that kind of like ditched me. Two of them I've already spoken about from my 18th birthday party, which was obviously like 10 years ago. The other is when I worked in childcare. I was working in the fourth nursery that I had ever worked in, the fourth out of five. I met a girl there and she became my best friend, my first ever best friend. We would hang out outside of work, like going for lunch or dinner. We went to Bournemouth, so we went to the beach together. There was this advert that used to play on the radio and it was like, I need a bowl tea. And we just had this thing where we would always sing it like, I need a bowl tea. I would pick her up on the way to work and like drop her home on the way back from work. And we had this amazing, friendship and I have never ever had a friendship like that since I honestly thinking about it, it it's bringing tears to my eyes because I don't know again what I said or what I did to change that friendship basically we went to the wedding of somebody that we worked with and after the wedding I dropped her home she was moving back to where she grew up which was like two hours or more away but she'd always said like nothing was ever gonna break us apart but it broke us apart I guess because she never spoke to me again fast forward like five years or five plus years I reached out to her because to this day I still feel hurt I still feel rejected I don't know what I said, I don't know what I did, and I just can't get over it. It doesn't matter how many times somebody says to me, like, just get over it, move on from it, she didn't deserve you. I can't, I can't. I reached out recently just because I needed closure. I just needed closure after all of this time. And she replied to me within like five minutes, which then got me thinking, how have you not had the five minutes to speak to me then? But she replied to me within that short amount of time and basically was just like, hi, how are you? How have you been? Yeah, I, I remember going to the beach and she said she didn't even remember why she had stopped speaking to me. She didn't remember what had happened. So now I still don't have that closure. I still don't know what happened. So the next topic I wanted to talk about was my boyfriend James and his friends because he has the same friends since growing up and since going to school. He never lost any of those friendships. I get on with all of his friends, don't get me wrong, there are like a few that I don't feel like are the best influence, but I do get on with all of them. I will not call them my friends. I refuse to call them my friends. Even though he will say that they are our friends and they will probably say like they're our friends, but they're not, they are his friends. They were his friends before I came along. They were his friends growing up, his friends at school, his friends all of his life, not mine. And I don't feel like it's right to say that they are my friends. And another thing to say is like, I don't speak to them unless I'm with him and we're all out together. Like they don't message me outside of us all being together. That's not a friend to me. That's just like one of my boyfriend's friends that I hang out with when I'm hanging out with my boyfriend. Do you know what I mean? The next topic to go into is my personality. And we are going to go into the nitty gritty details. We are going to like take a 
deep dive delve into this in April when I start my mental health series because we're going to touch on all of the personality disorders that I've been diagnosed with and we're going to go through all the symptoms that I experience but one of the major issues for me is a fear of rejection not being able to cope with like criticism so being very very sensitive to criticism and disapproval always wanting everybody to like me always wanting everybody to be my friend it's exhausting it's overwhelming this goes on in my head every day it's a daily occurrence i'm trying to figure people out all of the time and i'm getting frustrated just thinking about it because i absolutely cannot stress enough like how hard it is for me to have to go every day trying to know if I've said something wrong, done something wrong, if somebody says something to me, do I need to take it to heart? Did they mean what they said? Were they joking? I don't understand jokes. I don't understand sarcasm unless you say it. And I, I just can't. We are gonna talk about my personality in April and May. So I don't wanna go too much into that other than what I have just said. The last topic that I wanna touch on before we end this video is what I have done to try to make friends. And I have just clocked, the clocks are turning in here, that my title of this video might be a bit clickbaity because I do have a friend called Katie who I met a few years ago. And what I did is when I moved to the town that we live in, which is where my boyfriend grew up, I didn't, I grew up up like in the Buckinghamshire area near to Slough but when I moved to this town I didn't know anybody no nobody I put a post on one of the local Facebook groups basically saying I was new to the area I didn't know anybody and would anybody be interested in like meeting up going for coffee etc etc and that is how I met my friend Katie she reached out to me and then me and Katie have been friends ever since so if the video now seems clickbaity, I genuinely did not mean to. My head is all over the place. My mind runs at a million miles per hour, and I've said this in other videos, I can't always keep track on everything. <laughs> so what I have done to try to make friends is, as I said, I had put a post on the local Facebook group a few years ago, and then like a year later, I did it again, because I was like, you know, I did this a year ago, I only made one friend, you know, I still wanna make more friends. I didn't make any friends. Another thing that I have done is I went onto Bumble, which you might know of as a dating site, but you can also go on there if you are like sharing about your business, but also to make friends. I made an account on Bumble. I signed up to the BFF version, so just to make friendships. And I turned my dating mode on the settings off so that people that were looking for relationships could not see my profile. I was looking for women between the age of like 20 to 40, but probably more like in the 20s, within like 20 miles from where I lived so that they were not too far away. I would speak to people on there because we would match and then we'd have a chat and then the next day we didn't chat again. I did end up meeting with one girl on there and we met a couple of times, went to Costa for coffee, but again, it's now fizzled out, but I, I don't want to go back on because I have to pay to be able to do certain things on there and I just don't think it was worth it because I did that twice. Nothing's come out of it either time. It wasn't worth it. The last thing that I do to try to make friends is I just go overboard. I tell everybody my life story when I first meet them because for some reason my head thinks that that's what I need to do. I will also try and just put in a hint that I need friends. Like when I'm at work and I'm serving somebody their drinks and their food, I will try and slip in the fact that like, oh, I don't have any friends. Or I did recently last week have a girl actually give me her number and she actually put on there like, I need friends as well. I messaged her when I got home and was like, just got home, like really, really lovely to meet you, blah, blah. She was gonna go to bed because she had work the next day. She was up early. I said, that's great. Like, well, that's fine. We'll talk tomorrow. Nothing. She didn't reply to my message. I want that friendship that I had with my friend all of those years ago where we went to the beach together and we'd go on like road trips together and go for lunch, go for dinner. And that's the friendship that I'm missing. Katie, if you're watching this, please do not take this offensively. I just want more of those friendships, you know, where I can go out and hang out. So yeah, I'm 27, nearly 28. I have one friend and I don't know what I need to do to make any more friends because everything I try to do is just not successful. And I just can't deal with it anymore. 
but that's the end of the video thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye Everyone's lining up to see